Let's get straight to it then, eh? Valve is delivering a new Steam Deck. It's shipping soon. I've got a review unit here and well, it's excellent. <laughs> it really is. It's <laughs> just astonishingly good. On the face of it, it looks like a standard deck, right? But power it up and everything changes. You see, Valve has taken on board the criticism it received for its debut offering, which was already an astonishingly good handheld, let's be honest. And uh, well, it's addressed basically every major criticism and that starts with a big display upgrade. In fact, in terms of image quality, this is the best I've seen on any handheld, easily. And yes, it is OLED, but it's not just OLED, it's HDR2, at 90 hertz no less, proper OLED per pixel HDR, it's fantastic. I mean, fire up Ori and the Will of the Wisps, just as one example. I realised that pointing a camera at an OLED screen to film it, in the full knowledge that vast swathes of the audience are probably going to be watching this on an LCD, well it's kind of nuts right, but look, this screen is simply stunning. It's like a miniaturised home cinema setup, if you will, in the palm of your hand. So I'd like to have produced a much larger video for this, but international shipping meant I received the unit after US outlets did, and I really wanted to do my best to be here day one with the good news, because this really is a fantastic product across the board. It's not just about the screen either. Steam Deck already had class leading battery life for PC handhelds, but Valve is claiming anything from 30 to 50% more stamina now. They're also saying that it's lighter and it's cooler, and, well, it is on all of those counts. There's also a new Wi-Fi 6E module for faster downloads, though I found you really need an extremely fast internet connection to tell the difference. But hey, access to the 6 gigahertz spectrum can only be a good thing, right? What Valve is not claiming are any kind of performance improvements over the standard deck, but actually in my testing, you get some of that too, owing to faster LPDDR5 memory modules in the new model. So those are the headlines, but there's so much more to talk about here. But let's skip ahead and look at the new deck lineup. The range has been completely refreshed essentially, offering more storage. And yeah, the unit I was sent from Valve comes with a one terabyte SSD, but here's how the overall lineup looks. Okay, so the base $399 price point remains the same and you get an LCD screen there, uh, not the new OLED one. It's worth stressing that this is a first generation Steam Deck, lacking all of the refinements and improvements I'm gonna be talking about in this video. Still a good deal though, obviously better than the previous $400 offering. Uh, storage is upgraded from 64 gigs of eMMC flash to a 256 gigabyte SSD. Uh, $549 takes you into OLED territory with all the trimmings, paired with a 512 gig SSD, previously the high-end option. Meanwhile, $650 gets you the one terabyte deck with the OLED screen and premium anti-glare etched glass. All good stuff. What this does mean is that first-gen decks are getting a price cut then, and you can see how that pans out here while stocks last, I'd imagine. Uh, these are attractive price drops that put clear water between LCD and OLED decks, but I suspect that after watching this video and probably a bunch of others, you'll be wanting the new model anyway. So let's kick off by looking at the star of the show, the OLED display. While the deck is the same size as the first generation iteration, the screen is actually 7.4 inches up against the 7 inches of the original, meaning smaller bezels. Being OLED, you get pure blacks and vastly improved dynamic range, a 110% P3 wide color gamut and 600 nits peak brightness in SDR, rising to 1000 nit highlights with HDR content. A display refresh rate rises from 60Hz to 90Hz, but it is configurable. In fact, Valve has rationalized the refresh rate and frame rate cap sliders in SteamOS to a single slider where you specify your frame rate cap and then the deck itself adjusts the refresh rate of the display to give the most consistent experience at your chosen frame rate. HDR has always been a bit of a configurability nightmare in Windows, but with Steam Deck, Valve tells us that it just works. The most work you need to do is to enable it in the settings on some games. And yeah, I can verify that's the case in my testing. 
HDR display is actually more efficient than the LCD screen in the first gen deck, which is one of the reasons why Steam Deck OLED has better battery life than the original. But it's actually a wide array of improvements in the deck that contribute to this improvement. First of all, Valve has upgraded the battery. The 40 watt hour battery gives way to a 50 watt hour replacement in the OLED model. So notionally, you have a 25% improvement to battery life straight out of the gate. The new Steam Deck also has a 6 nanometer version of the Van Gogh APU, so expect some efficiency savings there too. So, to what extent can Valve's efficiency claims be backed up? Now here's the thing, I'm always a bit hesitant about battery life tests in general on these PC handhelds, because the experience varies so drastically, even in the same game, uh, depending on what settings, resolution and frame rate targets you set. And it stands to reason that if game frame rates change drastically, so do the demands on the processor and therefore the battery life. Uh, so consider this just a basic test then in like for like circumstances. Cyberpunk 2077, outside of V's apartment, looking out into Night City, medium settings, balanced FSR2 upscaling to 720p with frame rate unlocked so the SOC being pushed to its limits essentially, we're at 23 watts. On the LCD launch model, this rises to 26.1. So a bit of maths here, factoring in the larger battery of the OLED model gives us two hours, 12 minutes of gaming versus the one hour 32 on the LCD machine. It's about 42% of extra game time. I mean, this is pretty big, right? I also carried out the same test in the same area with a frame rate pegged to 30 frames per second. Seriously, introducing frame rate caps is a very smart thing to do on PC handhelds. On the OLED model, power draw drops to 18.8 watts versus 21.9 watts on the LCD launch machine. That gives us 2 hours 40 minutes of gaming on the new deck up against 1 hour 50 minutes on the LCD machine. This time a circa 45% improvement on a challenging game. This is really impressive. But what if I were to tell you that there were performance improvements with the new deck as well? Valve says that the OLED machine gives developers the same performance target as the original deck. But at the same time, it also says that the 5500 megatransfers per second LPDDR5 has been upgraded to 6400 megatransfers per second an 11% improvement in bandwidth. So 88 gigabytes per second of theoretical throughput increases to around 98 gigabytes per second. And let's just say that AMD APUs love extra bandwidth. So you've been looking at a Marvel's Spider-Man benchmark here playing out. And by my reckoning, that extra bandwidth is offering up 7.4% of extra performance. By improving memory performance, one of the key bottlenecks in the processor is reduced meaning marginally higher frame rates. And it's not a one-off either. A Plague Tale Requiem is pretty heavy on memory bandwidth and across the benchmark sequence here, the OLED model offers an 8.3% performance advantage over my launch LCD machine. In Forza Horizon 5 at high settings with 4X MSAA, the new machine has a 5.6% boost over the old. So content determines how much faster the OLED machine is, I guess. Uh, but I couldn't find any scenario where the OLED machine is the same speed or slower than the LCD. In Forza, I also noticed a touch less stutter, but this could just be run to run variants. And yes, yeah, some parts of any given game will thrive more on memory bandwidth than others. But thinking about it, a more efficient APU with the same 15 watt TDP limit could mean that we're actually seeing a performance gain of some description from both the faster memory modules and the more efficient chip. Even so, in Cyberpunk 2077, the CAND benchmark only offers up a 2.4 percentage point advantage across the benchmark. But once we switch over to the more CPU heavy city streaming results, this opens up to an 8.9% performance boost on the OLED model. And again, yeah, there does seem to be less stutter overall. So look, a 2.4% performance boost up to an 8.9% boost. Not exactly game changing as such, is it? Truth is, it's an extra two to three frames per second generally when you're looking at sub 60 FPS gaming. But what this does mean is that you have a little more leeway in successfully hitting your chosen frame rate target generally. It's a nice bonus in a machine that's packed with nice bonuses. I mean, the list of these nice bonuses is actually pretty immense. In drawing less power, the machine is obviously cooler. 
but Valve has included a larger fan in the revised deck, which basically means it can spin slower to achieve the same thermal throughput as the old one. Not that it needs to, when the APU itself is producing less heat in the first place. Bottom line here is that while far from a switch-like experience under load in terms of acoustics, the new deck is a lot quieter than my launch model. It's also lighter, which leads me on to something kind of weird. Uh, according to Valve, the new deck is 30 grams or 5% lighter than the old one. Should be an irrelevance in the hand, but it's not. I can actually feel the difference and I definitely prefer it. I mean, I'm looking at the list of improvements here and Valve has gone above and beyond in what is effectively Steam Deck's equivalent to a mid-generation console refresh. You get louder speakers, better bass. The deck already had best-in-class audio, in my opinion. Uh, improved haptics, 180 Hz touchscreen polling rate, revamped Bluetooth, improved thumbstick textures and geometry. Charging is also faster now with the supplied power supply, able to charge the machine from 20% to 80% in around 45 minutes. There's an increased commitment to repairability too. Valve has made it easier to open up the deck and switch to machine screws on the rear cover with metal bosses, a more durable setup compared to the launch model. The firm also says that you don't need to take the back off now to replace the main display, which is obviously very helpful. A lot of thought has gone into all of this stuff. And it all combines to make the new Steam Deck the best handheld out there, bar none. I mean, adding an OLED screen to the deck could have been a premium addition to the existing range. But not only did Valve revamp its entire stack, it added that OLED display to all but the entry-level model. And it's not just an OLED screen, it has that full support for high dynamic range too. You can feel the commitment and the hunger in this product for it to be the best it can possibly be. And that extends to the software side of things too, where Valve tells us that over 300 revisions to SteamOS have shipped. Steam Deck just gets better over time, whether it's down to developers favoring the machine and optimizing for it, or Valve pouring in more effort into its Proton compatibility layer. Uh, which often outperforms Windows, believe it or not. For example, uh, nine months ago, Oliver took a look at a range of 2022 heavy hitters running on Steam Deck, and we could barely get a Plague Tale Requiem running at a stable 30 frames per second. 720p resolution upscaled from 360p. Lowest settings, you know the score. These days, the game just runs better. 720p with balanced upscaling. Uh, we're still on low settings, but there's a significant quality improvement, a resolution improvement, and performance is much the same, if not a touch better. Oliver noted some pretty terrible stutter in this marketplace scene, and yet I'm able to run this at a flat 30 FPS now with no issue. There's something else that's kind of nuts too that I'm just adding here as a kind of PS. Now I love playing control on my Steam Deck console equivalent settings with a display refresh rate of 40 Hz was my chosen setup on the launch deck. However, booting the game on the OLED model actually brought up the DX11 DX12 launcher, which doesn't usually happen. And I was kind of amazed to see that ray tracing support has been added to control running under SteamOS. I guess it's a preview feature currently in the OLED version of SteamOS. Capping to 30 FPS, upscaling from 540p, got me into the realms of playability with uh, RT reflections there. But in dense higher geometry areas, there were clearly struggles. But Valve is looking at things in the longer term, obviously. Today's Steam Deck might be pretty poor when it comes to ray tracing performance, but the Windows PC handhelds of today use higher performance processors that do manage it. They do run better. And in a sense, I see this as Valve laying the groundwork for the Steam Deck of tomorrow. Oh, and in my press briefing, I did ask about SteamOS support for Windows handhelds, and I was assured that the commitment is still there. It's just that Steam Deck OLED was their priority. And yeah, performance on the most cutting edge PC titles is pretty much the only drawback the Steam Deck has right now. There are some games that just flat out won't run particularly well on the hardware. You can power your way past some of the limitations on those Windows handhelds with the more capable processors, uh, but the experience of the operating system and the terrible battery life means they only have limited utility for the more mainstream gamer. 
A Steam Deck outpaces a lot of them in terms of quality of life and functionality, and this model simply extends its lead still further. I mean, the screen is just epic stuff just on its own before you're factoring in all of the other enhancements that have been made. And yeah, as long as you're aware of the performance limitations on the latest games, you cannot go wrong with this new Steam Deck. And yeah, actually that amazing screen, well, I'd say that it actually gives a new lease of life to older games too. Even without HDR support, OLED is a game changer for the portable gaming experience. Just can't stress that enough. So I guess this really is just a quick look at the new Steam Deck, but based on what I've seen so far, this is the most expansive and transformative mid-generation console refresh I have seen. And Valve's description of this as the definitive version of the first generation Steam Deck isn't just bang on the money, it makes me think of how good a next generation Steam Deck's going to be. But I guess that's fanciful thinking for now as we reach the end of this particular video. So yes, if you enjoyed it, please do like, subscribe, share, uh, bell ringing for those into those notional uh, instant notifications. But the DF supporter program is altogether more important. It's a way to back the team in what we do, talk to us directly, get early access and bonus materials, and indeed to join our amazing community. Oh, and of course, there's high quality video downloads of everything we do, and indeed everything we have done for almost seven years now. But that's all from me for now, so thanks for making it all the way to the end of this one on the off chance that you did, in which case, additional thanks for watching and supporting Digital Foundry.